the doll artist Kim here from customdollbaby.com. If you've been following along on my blog, you would know that I ended last week with a matte varnish disaster. And then I got an email over the weekend from a friend in Australia who's experiencing the same matte varnish disaster. So I thought it would be a horrible disservice to the reborn and community if I didn't talk about what happens and what to do when reborning goes wrong. So welcome to the first installment of the When Reborning Goes Wrong series, How to Repair Your Matte Varnish Disaster. Varnish is a popular sealant for reborn dolls. It's also used often in skin texturing. It's also one of the key ingredients in my secret sauce recipe. The problem with matte varnish is that it's very unreliable and it has a very strong tendency to turn into white, flaky, crusty disgustingness. So what's also um, frustrating with matte varnish is that it reacts differently to different substances. So with what happened to me last week, I put the exact same stuff on a Chanel doll kit and on an Ariana doll kit. As you know, these are different manufacturers. The Chanel was made in China, the Ariana was made in Germany, um, and the matte varnish reacted very different to those two doll kits. On the Chanel, I had no problem. It sealed perfectly, it was beautiful. On the Ariana, it was a nightmare. So that means, um, unfortunately, my shelf life theory doesn't hold up. So I used the exact same mixture on two different doll kits and got different results. So that means something about the vinyl also impacts how matte varnish reacts and how it um, cures on the doll. So let's take a look at this Ariana and talk about how to get ourselves out of this mess. Okay, to take care of our matte varnish disaster, the first thing you're gonna need is a box of tissues because if this is the first time this has happened to you, you're gonna need a good cry. And then in seriousness, you're going to need some sponges, something that's mildly abrasive. So I like to use these soft covers. Also, if you have eyeshadow applicators, mine's are getting kind of dirty. Um, those work well, as well as the sponges that we use to apply the varnish, the spouncers or stipplers. Um, a brand new clean one will help you in this process. Next, you need to assess the extent of the damage. So this is the Ariana arm. And it, what I'm noticing, unlike her face, which was completely crusted all over, on her arm, I have crusty spots. So there's a crusty spot on the hand here, um, a lot of crusty spots underneath the arm. So this means that I'm gonna want to buff it off where it's crusty. On her face, however, it was a real disaster. I mean, there was no clean spots on the face. So in that circumstance, I decided to go ahead and take it all off because there was no amount of buffing that was gonna repair that. If you decide to do that, you're gonna wanna get a Q-tip and some odorless paint thinner. And in a very inconspicuous location on the doll kit, you want to put the, the solvent on the Q-tip and rub it on the doll kit. It's Monday, I can't talk. Um, to see if any of the paint is coming off. If you're not losing paint in your test area, you can very gently take a soft sponge and use the solvent to take all of the varnish off. And I'm talking about varnish that has not been cured yet. So in my secret sauce videos, um, I highly recommend letting the varnish dry before you put it in the oven so that if it turns into this, you have the opportunity to fix it. If this gets cured onto your doll, it's not gonna come off. At best, you might be able to get it off with some very high grit sandpaper but even so, you're still risking the painting underneath. So for all of your sealant, regardless of what you use, make sure you try it on a test part and make sure you let it dry before you cure it on your doll. Okay, so what I have is one of my little soft covers. I just put it on a brush and we're gonna do a wax on, wax off. So I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm using very light, round strokes to get the varnish off. And what this is doing is not removing the varnish completely, 
by taking off that crusty crap. Pardon my language. <laughs> this is very frustrating. Okay, so as you can see, it's coming off very nicely. And maybe you want to leave some of those little crunchies on because it looks like dead skin to you. That's fine too. Um, I'm not really feeling the dead skin look, so I'm just going to take it all off. Okay, and I'll demonstrate this with a spouncer as well. So here's a clean spouncer stippler. And same idea. Light strokes, light strokes. This will take it off. And I want to reiterate, this has not been cured. So this is just the dried varnish. varnish. It has not been through the oven, and that is the only reason why I'm able to get the white stuff off. If it cured, we would just be in a terrible situation and people would be getting their money refunded and I would want to dig a hole and crawl into it. So make sure you don't cure it. Don't cure until you're sure. I like that. I think I'm going to use that as a slogan. That's one of the nice things with the heat set mediums is you don't have to set it until you're ready. And your readiness should be determined by how satisfied you are with how the piece looks. Okay, so this thing is a little bit more abrasive than the soft cover, so we use very light strokes and always use circular strokes because you don't want to add streaks to the doll. Um, keep a clean brush handy because as you're going along, we're also going to want to dust off the stuff we've loosened to see how much further we have to go. So do that repeatedly until you've recovered your doll kit. But you know, again, keep the strokes light, don't scrape too hard. And once your sponge becomes saturated with the material, you're gonna have to wash it off with alcohol. Wash it in alcohol, rinse it in water thoroughly, and let it dry overnight. And the next morning it'll be good as new. I'd have to say I'm probably getting the best and fastest results using the stippler because it is a nice abrasive brunch, sponge. If you have anything else like that, you know, try different sponges and see which one works best for you. Um, keep the strokes light and goodness, I might need a dust mask or something. <laughs> and dust off your piece repeatedly. To ensure that you got it all. You can use different tools to get those hard to reach places. The last thing I quickly wanted to point out, so this is the plate that I used to apply the varnish to the doll kit. And as you can see, this varnish is not crusty either. I mean, it's been sitting out exposed to air and dust and everything else for as long as the doll kit has and it didn't turn white so it's really lending to the conclusion that it's something about the vinyl that reacted with the with the varnish um, that created all of that white stuff that we had to fight off 
So after about an hour of buffing, I realized that this was not gonna happen. So I decided to use uh, the solvent to get all that varnish off. So now the doll is nice and clean. No more crunchy stuff. That's a relief. There's still very trace amounts of the varnish left and that's okay, we can cure that on. At least we can't see it. Um, I wanted to also mention that I went back and did another test with satin varnish. So this is pigmented just like I would do with a matte varnish. Satin varnish is a lot thicker than matte varnish. It's almost the consistency of Vaseline. Um, so I added a little bit of paint thinner to it um, to make it looser and more spreadable and tried it on an itty bitty section of the stall kit and guess what? It also turned white, yay. So whatever it is about this kit, um, the sealant is simply is not having it. So I'll go ahead and get that set and varnish back off and then we'll move on. Um, I also wanted to mention that I recently did a Lilu kit, which is also a made in Germany kit, and I used a secret sauce recipe and it was fine. I didn't have any crusty stuff to deal with. So one thing that's unique about this Ariana kit is that it was painted and stripped down several times before I received it. Um, and it was an acrylic medium that was being used. So I know when I'm working with the Genesis um, doll kits that I stripped, don't paint as well as doll kits that haven't gone through that. And for that reason, all the kits that I mess up and strip down are in my sort of boo-boo test part inventory. Um, so maybe the stripping has something to do with why it won't take a varnish. But fortunately, um, the mommy for this doll is very well read on Reborn Care and uh, knows very well all of the materials that can stain and damage the doll. So I think she'll be in very good hands, even though we weren't able to do the level of sealing that we wanted to do. Um, I also wanted to conclude by saying I hope I didn't scare you with my horror stories. Um, I, you know, reborning is difficult and there are a lot of variables um, that impact the quality of your piece that are difficult to identify and difficult to control. So in my uh, blog post, the five never fail rules of rewarning, the first rule is expect to fail because there are so many things that can and do go wrong. The more you do it, the more prepared you'll be for mitigating those things. But when you're first getting started and you just spent months and months on this doll and you get to the very last step and you put varnish all over it and you completely ruined months of work, that's just not a good feeling. So just to be aware for beginners and for those who are considering getting into rewarning, um, things do go wrong. Um, but they're not always catastrophic, they're not always deal breakers, and there's always artists out there who will help you to fix what went wrong and avoid it going forward. So, um, good luck, <laughs> rewarning, uh, good luck with your, your sealants and varnishes, and I will look forward to seeing you next time, hopefully, um, with better, better results than <laughs> what we were doing today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel so that you'll always be up to date for uh, all future videos. Thanks so much, I'll see you next time. <laughs>